السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا أيها المسلمون to the long time listener and first time visitor we welcome you to this episode now without further ado let's get into it الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد يا عباد الله Do you have good Islam? It's a very important question that we need to ask ourselves and that we need to think about Do we have good Islam? And what does it mean to have good Islam? From those matters and that which enters into having good Islam is that which we find in the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu fima rawahu at-turmadhi qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min husn islam al-mar tarkuhu ma la ya'nih the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in his hadith that has been narrated on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and has been collected by at turmadhi Rahmatullah alayhi, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, what translated means, and from a person's good Islam, is that they leave alone that which does not concern them. So if we want to have good Islam, then this has to be a characteristic that we adorn ourselves with, that we leave alone those things that do not concern us, that we leave alone those things that are not our business minding our business, then this is from having good Islam. Qala Shaykh Fawzan, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, as relates to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, min husn Islam al-mar, from the good Islam of an individual, a min tamami dinihi, meaning from the completion of his religion, from the completion of his religion. Fadalla ala anna al-deen yakunu tamman, and this points us to the fact that the, or a person's religion, then it could be complete. نعم. And it also can be incomplete. It can be deficient. Why? And it will be deficient due to the dealings, the interactions, the actions that come from the individual. So an individual can do things that will decrease their Islam. A person, I want you to listen to this, a person can do something that will decrease their Islam. Okay? So with this being the case and with this being the reality of the situation, al-Muslim yahtimu bi ikmal dini. The Muslim, he should be concerned. The Muslima, she should be concerned with Completing their religion. And they should be concerned to stay away from and beware. They should beware of those things that will decrease their Islam. Okay? So we have to take this serious because if we want our deen, we want our Islam, our Islam, our religious practice, right? Our devotion, if we want that to be complete, then we have to do those things that will bring about its completion. And if we do not, then we may fall into those things that will decrease it. Okay? So we have to be cautious and beware from those things that will decrease it. And as relates to his statement, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tarkuhu Ma La Ya'nihi, that he leaves off, he leaves alone, or she leaves off, or she leaves alone, those things which do not concern them. Naam. The ulama, they explain, um, we're going to come back to this, but the, the ulama, they explain that we understand from this, la ya'nihi a la yanfa'u. Those things that do not concern him, meaning those things that do not benefit him. Right? So I want you to keep that in mind. Those things that do not benefit them. Why? Because 
these things these things that will decrease a person's religion those from the things that will de deplete and decrease a person's religion as Sheikh Hosani says deen al-insan annahu yatadakhalu fi ma la laysa min sha'nihi aw min shu'uni na'am wa ma laysa min ikhtisasihi is that an individual from those things that will decrease a person's religion that will decrease a person's islam is that they enter into they involve themselves in those things that are not from their affairs na'am laysa min shu'uni it's not his business they enter into things that they have no business entering to it's not his business and those things that are not from those things that he is specialized in so they enter into affairs that one are not their business and then affairs that are not their field and not their realm of expertise okay so it's beyond their capability they have nothing of value to offer because these are things that are outside their their expertise it's outside their wheelhouse as they say okay but then they have the nerve still to enter into these things these are from those things that will decrease a person's islam those things that you are not in charge of those things that you have not been given responsibility over those things that if you don't enter into them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to ask you about them on a day of judgment it's not it's not it's, 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 it's not your yani it's not within your jurisdiction those things that are not within your jurisdiction whether it be from a legislative manner or be from just you know naturally is not from your not from your jurisdiction so why are you involving yourself in it why are you entering into it why are you trying to get involved you have nothing to offer and you don't really fully understand the situation anyway to begin with you don't have all the information needed to even come to a informed decision and you and you may not have even access to even access the information needed to come to an informed decision and even if you were to ascertain this information you don't have the ability to understand it and to fully yeah any you know uh, uh um uh process it and then extract from it what is needed so with this being the case why are you getting involved why are you getting involved really why for what ala kulli hal the sheikh he says he goes on to mention he says uh ينبغي على الانسان ان يعتني بدينه that which is and coming upon an individual and يعتني بدينه he should worry about his own religion worry about his religion worry about those things that will benefit them نعم ولا يعتني بما ليس له فيه فائدة and he should not enter into those things that don't have any benefit for him now I know we spoke about this before and unfortunately we got to still keep speaking about it because it's still a thing individuals getting involved in affairs that have nothing to do with them individuals getting involved in affairs that have been imported to us fitna that's not even local it's not even domestic fitna it's imported fitna that has nothing to do with us nothing to do with our communities nothing to do with our situations nothing to, nothing that has any benefit for us whatsoever and then we involve ourselves in it we involve our, ourselves in it and then we turn away from those things that actually are important for us and in our situations let me give you an example how often is it that individuals they get caught up in what's going on overseas between sheikh such and such and sheikh so and so in an issue where the ulama the scholars themselves they are dealing with it the scholars are dealing with it right so what business is it for us to involve ourselves in the likes of these situations what benefit do we get from it what benefit do we get for spending time on the likes of these affairs that one have nothing to do with us they have no effect on us no bearing upon us not on us nor on, on our communities and then we turn an eye to situations that require our attention how many communities out there right and now i'm speaking to the the muslims here and in particular I'm speaking to the people of the sunnah the salafis here in america spread out okay cuz we know the salafis are spread out all throughout america they're not all in the northeast right they're not all in this region 
and not other regions, but we're spread out. So we know in certain places, these may not be a question, it may not be an issue, but in other places, they're an issue. So let's look at, for example, your Salafi trying to hold on to your religion, trying to make sure you can properly educate your children, but you may not have the ability to do it, nor the resources to do it. So where are the schools for you? You're out in the Midwest. Where are the schools? What are you going to do for your children? How are your children going to learn about Islam? You're in a place that doesn't have a masjid upon the sunnah. No schools upon the sunnah. No marakis upon the sunnah. What are you going to do for your children? What are you going to do for the education of your children? Where are the programs? Where are they? Point them out. If you know about them, leave them in the description box below. Where are the programs that somebody in Utah can benefit from? Where are the programs that somebody in the Midwest can benefit from? Where are the programs that somebody in New Mexico could benefit from for their children? Where, where, where's the K-12 for their children? Where they can get religious instructions upon the sunnah? Where is it at? Where is it? How many programs do we have available for somebody in these remote regions to benefit from? Where are they? Where are they at? Leave it in the description. If you know about them, leave it in the description below. Educate us. Don't bring me to one area and say, well, we got a school here, so think, okay, that's there. That doesn't give a service to the rest of the country, only to that region and only to the people sometimes, even within that city. Doesn't even go beyond the city. Only the people in that particular city, that particular area. That's it. And even the capacity of those schools, if everybody in the area wanted to come, not even big enough. So, do we really have time to become busy in things like this? What's going on over there has no connection to us. People who we don't even know that they existed, we don't even understand their names. We don't, you know what I mean? What 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 benefit? Sheikh so and so I never heard about before. And I'm not saying that to be disrespectful in any which way, shape, and form. But I'm just expressing the reality of the situation. We're speaking about these mashaykh who have their who have their, yeah, uh, their superiority and they have their, their status, we should say, right? They have their status and they have their nobility. But at the same time, we, we don't know anything about them and, and what they're doing doesn't really affect us. It has really no bearing on us. And the early out dealing with it. So it's being dealt with. So if the early out dealing with it, then I don't have to worry about it. If it, if, it's, if it doesn't affect me. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to take a stance on it for what? It doesn't affect me. If, 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 if it happens to come across my table, as they say, and it's a clear violation of, of the Kitab and the Sunnah, then we already know our protocols. We, yani, uh, or what's the word I'm looking for? Then we, 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 we're not in agreement with that mistake. Then we, then we say, no, that mistake, I'm not in agreement with that. No, I don't accept that. That's a mistake, okay? But anything outside of that, they're dealing with it. I'm not worried about it because we got other things we need to worry about, like the education of our children. Other things we need to worry about, like establishing misajid. How many misajid that we have are still rented? You can't build in nothing permanent on rented land. It's still rented. That's a problem. Now we need we need to purchase. We need ownership. Okay? Because if the owner of that property decides, I don't want to rent no more, now what? The masjid is out? Now we have to scramble? Now we have to get GoFundMe's and all this other stuff to try to raise money in a pinch, in a bind, so that the people of the masjid are not left without a place to worship? We have issues like this going on. I don't have time to worry about this other stuff. We have things like this going on. The masjid is still rented. We need to own something. We need to own it. We don't have time for this other stuff. Unless it directly impacts us and forces our attention if it, I don't want to hear about it. If it's being dealt with, the am I dealing with it, let them deal with it. It's not for us to get involved. Sheikh Fawzan, he mentions elsewhere that actually it's not for the students of knowledge and for the common people to get involved in those things that are going on between the ulama. And when they get involved, the common folk and the students of knowledge, it only what? 
it increases the situation. It makes it worse. It exacerbates the situation. So, it, so his advice to us is what? Stay out of it. Mind your business. That's from a person's good Islam. It's to mind their business. Okay? Kulli hal, there are things that we have to put our attention on. How many of the Muslim youth here in this country are going astray? How many of the Muslim youth here in this country are falling into drugs, falling into gangs, falling into all types of nonsense, starting to question their religion, going off to college and becoming victim to pseudo-intellectualism, to now start disbelieving in the text because they put their intellect in front of the text. These are problems. These are things that are going on. Also, how many domestic problems do we have from the people of innovation that are right here? The Asha'ira spreading like, 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 like rabies. Okay? The Sufiya spreading like rabies. Here, domestically, I'm talking about domestic individuals, people who live right here in this country, people who are speaking predominantly in English, spreading nonsense, people who are just a few states over, or maybe even in our own state, maybe even in our own town, spreading foolishness. They're not being dealt with, but I'm supposed to put my time and trying to deal with a scholar who professes to be upon the Sunnah, to be upon Salafia. A scholar who says that he is Sunni, Salafi, Ethri. But he fell into some mistakes. But I'm supposed to put all my time in looking at him to throw him off of it when I got a Dio Bundy, Sufi, Eshadi, right here in the masjid around the corner. And I'm not dealing with him. I'm not talking about him. I'm not warning against him. But I'm supposed to warn against a scholar who says he's Salafi, Ethari, Sunni. When we look at his works, this is what you find. But yeah, he got a mistake here, a mistake there. And I'm saying for argument's sake, he had a bona fide mistake over here, a bona fide mistake over there. But I'm supposed to put my attention on him and then leave alone all these Sufis that are right here. I'm supposed to put my attention on him, a person who his books not really translated, does not have a bigger impact or effect upon the English speaking Muslim, upon me and my family. You know what I mean? Let's take it back. Does not have an effect upon me and my family. Doesn't have an effect upon nobody that goes to my masjid. Not real for real. Might be a clip here and there, something like that. That's about it. Nothing, nothing real for real. But then we have people who right around the corner who are spewing foolishness and falsehood and I'm not going to deal with nothing that they're talking about. Why? Because I'm putting all my energy and trying to throw a selfie sheikh off of it. That doesn't make any sense, man. When you people start doing things like this, I'm sorry. The, you know, the person, you know, who grew up in Patterson, New Jersey, starts to think, who, who, what side you on? Who are you working for? Really? Who are you working for? Because what you're doing is not helping to spread the sunnah and strengthen the community of Salafis here in America. It's not doing that. It's not helping to strengthen the people of the sunnah here. But if anything, it's helping to weaken us and distract us by put, putting our attention in places where it does not belong. And then we neglect things that should have our attention. So now we don't have anything for our children. We need a masjid that's rented. We don't have any institutions that have been built. But I'm supposed to worry about this and worry about that. Now, another 20 years go by and we still don't have, we still don't have a school. We still don't have a masjid that is uh, owned. You know, so I don't want to hear it, man. I don't want to hear, oh, but we own this over here. So what? Good for you. Until the people of the Sunnah own a masjid and have a school and some type of education, more our kids, whatever the case, that was sitting whatever the case it may be, and everywhere that they are at, I don't want to hear it. I'm being straight up with you. I don't want to hear it. I don't care if you have five Marakis in Northeast, in the Northeast. I don't care if you own a Masajid Yanni in the Northeast and maybe one here and one in that state and one in that state. I don't care. It's not enough until everywhere there are people of the Sunnah. We own a masjid. We have a Marquez, a Dawa Center, something for our children there for the for, for that community of Salafis, wherever they may be, throughout the country. Until we have that, I don't want to hear it. 
not to mention, not to even get into. Okay, what do our children do? Okay, we have the K through 12 everywhere that the people of the Sunnah are. All right, now what about after high school? Now what? Now what? Clinics, hospitals that are ran by the Muslims, where are they at? Where are they at? So I really, we, don't, don't tell me and don't act like things are good. Because if you're tricking people into thinking, no, things are good, it's all lovely. Who are you working for? What's your standard? I don't get it. Anyway, I digress. And I think you understand the point. We have to concern ourselves with that which benefits us. And we should not involve ourselves in those things which we have nothing to do with us. Sheikh Fozan, and really this is extremely summarized. Our brothers who have gone over the explanation of 40 hadith by Sheikh Fozan, then I encourage the brothers to go back and to listen to those lessons, bithilahi ta'ala, in more depth and more detail. Um, alhamdulillah, we completed this book here. I myself, I completed this book here in Florida, but the recordings for the majority of it are lost. They're gone. Maybe in the future, inshallah ta'ala, I'll go back over it. But for right now, the majority is, is, is not available. It's lost. There's some pieces here, some pieces there, but the majority of it are lost. Okay? Um, anyway, Sheikh Fozan, he says something that is very important, and I want you really to understand and to, and, and to hold on to this. He said is that for Ejibu, it is important that, yani, and yutakhidha had al hadith min hajan is that we take this hadith as our protocol. This is our method. That we leave alone those things that don't concern us. Naam. We take this as a way, our way for every single Muslim. Naam. Every single Muslim. Muta'alliman kan aw jahilan. Whether that is a person of knowledge or an ignorant person. Because the Shaykh, he explains some of the nuances of this. Now listen, you may even be an individual who has the knowledge, they, has the, they have the expertise, but it has not been placed on you as something to worry about. I'll give you an example, just real quickly. So, for example, in Saudiya, right? For example, you have a situation going on. You have the likes of Sheikh Fozan, who are in positions to deal with things officially. And we're talking about a country now. So officially, the ulama of that country, the legina, the council of scholars in that country, issues come up, they have to deal with them. The country tells them, the ruler tells them, deal with this issue. This is an issue I need you to research, look into, and to deal with, and produce some fatawa for the Muslims as relates to it. Right? So they officially they have been given this job. It's an official job. They have the knowledge, expertise, everything to do, take care of the job. They're handling the job. Okay? So now somebody, a scholar from there, who has not been placed in that position to look at this particular thing, there's no need for them to get involved. Now I'm talking about this is another island, an island that's outside of that council, outside of that official mandate to issue for tower upon this issue. They're outside of that. Now, it is not for them to get involved. A scholar in another province that is outside this council that has not been given that task is not on them because they have the task that they already have in educating their people, giving for tower for the issues that are going on in their area, whatever the case is, teaching, right? They have their responsibility. Their plate is already full. So they don't have to look at that issue that the Council of Scholars are looking at. They don't have to get involved. They don't have to get involved. Why? Because it's being handled by people who could handle it. You understand? So in that case, that scholar even doesn't get involved. It's not his business. None of his business. So now, if that's the case for the scholar, then what about us? What about us? The common man or the student of knowledge who will not reach that level or the common man not upon us for for us 
We need to learn. It's upon us to learn. Right? Upon us, we need to learn. What do you need to worry about? You need to worry about revising, memorizing. That's what's on you. Why are you wasting your time going over things that the early man dealing with? And how poor you are on this. Get your mind right. Get your priorities straight. Worry about this. Worry about understanding it. Worrying about understanding its language. Worrying about understanding the tafsir of his ayat. Concern yourself with that which benefits you. Make sure your family's on that same page. Make sure that they're doing what they need to do. To, to understand, to learn, to hold on to the sunnah. Know what the sunnah is so they can be upon it. This is your concern. Living your life upon what is right, holding on to your religion. This is your concern. Especially we're here over here in the West. We're getting bombarded from all sides. Worry about what you need to worry about. And those things that you don't need to worry about, don't worry about them. Throw them out. Tell them, get out of here. I don't got time for that. Because I got things I need to worry about. And what I have on my plate is, it, it feels like it's more than I can even handle. So I definitely don't have time for these big issues that I don't fully comprehend or understand. I don't have time for it. I don't have the bandwidth for it. Worry about what you need to worry about. So do you have good Islam?